Like so many of us here in Baltimore, I too am both a product of adversity and triumphant over dysfunction, divestment, and disappointment. I learned very early that life isn't always fair, that tomorrow is uncertain, and the environment you grow up in will either build you or break you. I come from a long line of police officers. Um, my grandfather was one of the first African-American police officers in, in Massachusetts. And one of the things that he instilled upon us is the importance of public service. So all four of my uncles became police officers, as well as my mother. Um, I can tell you that one of the other things that my grandparents, who have been married for 58 years, instilled in us was the importance of family. And when my mother gave birth to me, she was 17 years old. So um, she was very young when she had me. And my grandmother and grandfather raised the two of us. Um, and I can tell you that my grandmother was very instrumental in instilling in me the importance of education. I was blessed. At the age of six years old, I was accepted into one of the longest standing desegregation programs in the country, Metco. Uh, I was actually bused an hour outside of the inner city of Boston to Dover Sherborne, which is one of the richest towns in Massachusetts. And for me, that was my first experience um, with the inequities in the educational system. So what it did for me is it laid the foundation for pursuing excellence. After having gone through the MECO program, I had the awesome opportunity to actually participate in a program called Highways into the Past, History Organizing and Power. And I studied the Civil Rights Movement and traveled over 4,000 miles to study the Civil Rights Movement and its implications on present day racism. Um, and that was my first orientation, my first exposure to justice. After having had that awesome experience, I knew that I wanted to be an attorney it was a matter of what type of attorney I wanted to be. The 1990s was an extremely interesting time for me because while I was in high school, uh, the prospect of being a first generation college student was something that I was extremely optimistic about. But by the same token, the 1990s was also a very trying time in my community in particular. Um, this was the height of the crack cocaine era, and the violence that plagued my community was devastating. It actually hit really close to home on August 19, 1994, when my cousin, who was extremely close to me, who was like my best friend, um, was killed on my front doorsteps. And that was extremely trying because Together, this was something that we had dreams and aspirations. He wanted to be an architect. I knew I wanted to be an attorney. Um, and the way that it ripped my family apart to know that my um, cousin was killed was devastating. And this was my first introduction to the criminal justice system. Having to go to court and deal with prosecutors, having to go to court and see my neighbor who had the courage and audacity to cooperate with the police, to testify in court, and the way in which the district attorney's office dealt with my family is something that inspired me. I used that experience to propel me. While at Tuskegee University, I um, knew I wanted to be an attorney, so I majored in political science. My grandmother didn't have the opportunity to go to college, so one of the things that I wanted to do was to excel in everything that I did. I was president of Pi Sigma Alpha, which is the National Political Science um, Honor Society. I was part of the bioethics debate team. Also while I was there, I met an individual who was just as ambitious and just as dedicated and committed to changing uh, the community as myself. I met Nick Mosby. While I was in law school, I participated in as many clinical experiences as I could. Nick and I um, got engaged and we bought a house. We decided to invest in Baltimore City and we bought our house in Reservoir Hill. And after I graduated from law school, I moved to Baltimore City where I started my career in the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office. I started as a law clerk and once I passed the bar, I became an Assistant State's Attorney. 
Uh, after five months of an entry, being an entry level assistant state's attorney, I was promoted to supervisor of the early resolution court. Having had that experience, I worked my way rather quickly through the state's attorney's office and was promoted to the misdemeanor division and ultimately the general trial division where I successfully prosecuted some of the most heinous felons in the state of Maryland. And I had an overall 80% conviction rate. My education and work experience prepared me for the role of assistant state's attorney in Baltimore City. Management provided me leadership opportunities based on my qualifications. And my performance day in and day out was making the streets of Baltimore safer. I am very blessed to have such a supportive, loving husband who is just as dedicated to uh, inspiring change in, in our community as my husband, Nick. In addition to having that supportive network of, you know, my husband, I also have two beautiful little girls that together we try to instill the importance of civic engagement and community service. For 27 weeks, I, along with my husband, spearheaded an anti-violence rally in which we engaged community, churches, businesses to stand up for the violence that was partaking and, and happening in, in Baltimore. Having had the experience of being on the front lines in Baltimore City courtrooms day in and day out, I know and I recognize that cutting funds from victim witness services is unacceptable. I've lost a loved one. I know how important victim witness services is to families who have lost loved ones. As an assistant state's attorney for Baltimore City for six years, the biggest problem that I saw was a culture of distrust. People are distrustful of the criminal justice system and sometimes rightfully so. But if that's your biggest barrier to getting the really bad guys off the streets, I'm talking about the ones with no code of ethics who are killing women and killing children, then as the administrator of the criminal justice system, you should be breaking down those barriers of distrust. When I'm state's attorney, my leadership strategy is to focus on these violent repeat offenders. It's a very small group of them. These individuals who time and time again are the same individuals who keep going in and out of the criminal justice system. I'm going to make it my top priority to go after these individuals. Secondly, I intend to better protect our witnesses and victims. Baltimore is the home of witness intimidation where the stop stitcher mentality began. You shouldn't be cutting funds from victim witness services. And when I'm state's attorney, I intend to collaboratively work with federal, state, and local government in order to increase funding to better protect our witnesses. Finally, I intend to have a presence and visibility in our communities, which is currently not the case. We have got to work collaboratively with churches, businesses, community members. Everybody has a stake in the safety of our neighborhoods, and the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office should be looked at as an asset to the community. I intend to get to our children before they get to the criminal justice system. Because at the end of the day, this is about relationships. And we have to have better relationships in order to effectively reform the criminal justice system. Mm -hmm.